Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are trying to look into cheap and reliable web hosting, trying to get your web product out there, check them out. They're a growing company. They just recently opened a new data center in Canada. They're opening new data centers all the time. And I've been using them for eight years. So check them out. The link is in the description tab below. I'm talking about the state of Python in 2019, and it's one of the most popular languages. And, um, and just recently, some of the biggest companies in the world have talked about adopting it. Just um, in, the day, in the news a couple of days ago, Netflix announced that like pretty much every single one of their movies is um, kind of strung together through one Python process or another. So um, their entire backend infrastructure is using Python. And they're not the only company. When I was first getting started 10 years ago, I remember I was, I was really in love with Python. And you know, a lot of people, I would say a lot of hacker programmers definitely were using Python and, and knew about it. But there was this whole other community of like .NET developers and stuff like that that really gave Python no glance or no look whatsoever. Um, and when you fast forward now 10 years, that's like completely changed uh, for sure. Like you go to Azure and like one of their biggest platforms that they're trying to actually support is saying, hey, we'll run, you can run your Python stuff on our Azure cloud and everything. And uh, so when it comes to industries that Python is dominating in, machine learning, artificial intelligence is probably the biggest. Just recently, Google announced at a cloud hosting convention their new AI platform. And this is built around all kinds of open source technology tools, but most of those tools are built around um, or have primary support for Python as a programming language to interact with them. So one of the big news items last year was that Guido Van Rossum, the creator of Python, the benevolent dictator for life, he stepped down last year from the role, but he still plays a part. And earlier this year, he announced that, um, or he was talking at a, a conference, and he was talking about how the Python community is changing. And one of their biggest things that they're adapting to is static type safety and getting an influence from TypeScript. So he actually referenced TypeScript specifically as a language that is doing it right. Since TypeScript is essentially built on top of Java, it basically he looks at what TypeScript is doing and he thinks that Python can model similar behavior. And there is no denying that there is a ton of runtime uh, bugs when it comes to a dyna dynamically interpreted language uh, where you don't have any sort of compile time checking for types and type collisions. And the primary tool for adding static type checking to your Python code base is using MyPy. It's the most popular package out there, but Guido himself actually referenced this project in the same conference. So according to the latest Stack Overflow developer survey, which uh, it, it tallies like 90,000 developers that are on Stack Overflow. It doesn't represent the millions of programmers out there, but like 90,000 people participated. For whatever reason, Rust is the most favorite language on Stack Overflow, but Python is the second, and I think that's the second year running. Um, so it's the fastest growing language, though, of all the, uh, the larger languages. So another big change that's coming to Python is the use of pip files. Um, if you guys have seen projects out there on GitHub, you've seen that like other Python projects are now using these these pip files. And basically, the Python community has come together and they recognize that their package management system is out of date. And they want something similar to what we have in the JavaScript community with NPM and having a package.json file with all your dependencies laid out and their versions and things like that. So that's what pip file is aiming to solve here. And that project is continuing to see adoption going into 2019 and it's probably going to be the way going into the future all right the next big project that actually comes from a fellow virginian programmer python programmer who created python requests he created the pip environment project and this project actually uses pip file you can see it's in here and github and um this is going to be a replacement for virtual environment and everybody should just be using it at this point, assuming you're on anything Python 3 and, 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 and plus. But I know there are some Python people out there that are still using Python uh, 2.7. And I think there's one dude out there, uh, just one guy that I know that is using 2.6. So very similar to other developments that are occurring also in JavaScript, these new template literals allow you to do like template um It allows you to create like template languages a lot easier. So you can embed 
variable is much easier than having to concatenate a bunch of strings together. So that's a new feature to JavaScript. The reason why I mention it in Python is because we have these things now that are called F strings and F strings give us the same ability from within Python now. All right, so here's an example from Python's official documentation. This is a variable that has the value of Fred and then it's using a Python F string and then you're able to use the curly brace syntax inside of here, similar to like what you've seen in um, template engines and like Jinja 2 or Django's template engine. Um, and you can just embed variables right in there without string concatenation. And that makes things much easier to deal with. So the latest versions of Python will give you that. All right, so the next thing I'll mention is that I think unit testing overall in the Python environment is still lacking compared to other environments that are out there. Um, we are getting better tooling and everything through the Visual Studio Code, which is free. We used to only have editors that we write our code in, um, things that we'd have to pay for and pay a lot of money for. Um, and those tools are things like PyCharm. People will swear by PyCharm. I don't actually use PyCharm. I find it to be kind of uh, just kind of too slow. And I do like JetBrains' products, but I, I'm not a big uh, PyCharm fan these days just because it, it seems like everybody is going to Visual Studio Code because as a web developer and doing almost everything in web, um, this just gives me everything I need, including Python. So I'm able to write Python and Java. Uh, JavaScript, I mean, anything I want to add a, a extensions for. I can also set up all my debugging, unit testing, um, and everything right right through this free open source editor. So, all right, so next, um, Django and Flask, the two popular web frameworks that are in Python, are still continu continuing to dominate the overall web market. So websites like um, Netflix are using Flask for a lot of their back-end microservices and their APIs that are all communicating with each other. So what's very interesting is if we look at w 3 Text, which is uh, supposed to be an authority on how many websites are using a specific language, according to this, uh, Scala outnumbers Python and uh, JavaScript node must be bullshit. Like this website has to be bullshit. Anyway, you cannot, like, I don't know, like, I just can't believe this, but like, I do recognize the fact that like ASP.NET, Java, PHP, all those web, web languages are probably going to outnumber Python jobs, but that is, um, it, it's slowly changing. I think there's slowly seeing a more and more adoption with Flask and then there's other Python web frameworks out there. Uh, there's things like Tornado that had a lot of Facebook support. Um, so there's different Python options out there. So th this just cannot be accurate. I don't see how that's possibly accurate. All right. So in 2019, Python is still not a good option for web uh, or mobile development. Any sort of mobile development, you really want to stay away from the Kiwi project if you're really serious about trying to get it done in the next 10 years. They're working as hard as they possibly can on this stuff. But like the question is, why would you ever use it? You know what I mean? Like, why would you use this if you were truly trying to get an Android app to the market? You're better off using something that's a little bit more stable. Um, this thing, like I know for Windows, probably don't even bother trying it. At least the last time I tried it, probably a year ago or so. Or maybe other people have different experiences there. But like, unfortunately, Python does not have too much options, uh, too many options for us when it comes to mobile development. So we should probably stick to things like Flutter or something like that, um, or even Unity Game Engine for building games and, uh, and mobile apps. Because when it comes to games as well, Python also is not really the best language, not just from a speed standpoint, but also just from the fact that there's like no game frameworks out there because there's no speed behind Python. But if you do want to get behind um, or just get started in basic gaming, if you want to build like a Pac-Man, some Pong, like old school stuff like that, like Python definitely gives you that ability. And there's even free game engines like Pygame that you can get into. But when it comes to mobile development, I definitely just, uh, Python's probably several years away from having anything that's going to be able to compete with even anything like uh, Xamarin, uh, even anything close to that. All right, so according to the number one jobs website in the United States, Indeed.com, there, there are currently 67,000 open Python listings. And if you look at something like PHP, if it, if it truly has 80% of the market in the United States, there's currently only 17,000 jobs listed for PHP developers. 
Um, and then when you look at something like Java, there's 69,000. And then .NET with C Sharp combined roughly the same amount as Java. So when it comes to jobs, jobs um, number one is probably going to be JavaScript because everybody's using JavaScript. And then you have TypeScript now, which is kind of like a competitor, um, so to speak, somewhat, not really. But you, you have a lot of people that are writing both JavaScript and TypeScript these days. TypeScript is now being used probably in 35% of all new JavaScript projects that are springing up out there, if not more. That's probably my rough estimate. Um, but with Python, um, it's definitely in the top three when it comes to just uh, overall typical programming languages. It would be C Sharp, Java, and Python. All right, guys. Also, the popular open source repository out there called GitHub, everybody's probably familiar According to their statistics, they are now saying that the most popular languages are number one, JavaScript, number two, Java, number three, Python, number four, PHP, number five, C++, number six, C Sharp, and then number seven, TypeScript. So that's according to GitHub. All right. And then also when it comes to ZipRecruiter, which is another popular jobs website, they are saying that the average Python developer, software developer in the United States is making $115,000 a year. And then you have as high as $162,000. I can tell you that there is definitely Python programmers making six digits at Netflix. Um, or no, seven digits per year. There's definitely seven digits, Python, seven digit Python developers at Netflix. Um, they, they actually knowingly talk about the fact that they pay their salary, uh, ridiculous salaries at like Netflix. And, uh, anyway, so 162 is no doubt not the top of that line. So maybe actually that's the top of the median right there. Uh, no, that's 153. Anyway, this is, uh, also probably whatever. Anyway, they, th there's definitely higher salaries and I'm sure that there's lower salaries as well. All right. Thank you guys for watching make sure you subscribe and have a good day and let me know what your thoughts are on whatever. Bye.